welcome everybody to Otter Fox Productions game review of Secret of Mana, the re-release by the PlayStation 4. Sweet. We look forward to talking about this with you guys today. We are interviewing Phoenix and Chrono. Say hello everybody. Hi. Oi. Great. And Geo Otter, I have I have personally never played this game before, so I'm gonna take the control in a realm of interviewer as we ask some really fundamental questions about what we can expect for this new game uh, from veterans and fans of Secret of Man. <laughs> so, we're going to ask uh, seven different questions about the game. We're going to talk about the graphics, we're going to talk about the controls, we're going to talk about the level of difficulty, we're going to talk about music and sounds, we're going to talk about acting and voice acting, we're going to talk about the old game versus the new game, and we're going to ask, why play Secret of Mana? So, without further ado, Chrono, Phoenix, you guys ready to answer some hard questions about the Secret of Mana? I'm never ready to answer a hard question, but okay. Say, uh, I'm going to curl up and lick my paws. <laughs> Alright, so let's get started. We're going to first mention the most obvious difference between the new and the old games. Graphics. So, the first thing that you see is the difference in how it looks. So, you know, what do you see being a primary difference in graphics? from the original game to the gameplay footage on the release trailer. But the trailer, it is what it is. I mean, it's only about a minute long. It's very much flashy. It shows the very first, like, 15 seconds kind of thing. And it, of course, you know, play music. You had not show play music, so people don't understand. <laughs> I mean, the original game was on the Super Nintendo. And at that time, we had, what, 30, 16, 32 bit? 16? No, that was oh, the Nintendo 64. 64. 32 bit. Okay, so right, 32 bit. So we had a you know polygons, but they made them look brown. You know, whereas this, I mean, the PlayStation 4 has so many other resources available. I mean, more colors. Um, the Super Nintendo is where they introduced like different movement in the backgrounds. A background far away didn't move as quickly as your foreground. And, as and a that, measure of depth. Right. right. So it, it gave it that sort of a feel of a three-dimension kind of thing. And it was really cool. But you still only had your, you know, your eight directions. But it wasn't a three-dimensional like you, like you see in the trailer. So you've got more depth, more colors. And the lens flares cracked me up. I was like, this is run by J.J. Abrams. <laughs> <laughs> so, but why not make it look more realistic, right? It, it has a, a very, I would say, playbook style. Something that would be similar to, like, a... The Valkyria Chronicles. It's, mm. it's artistic in its rendition. Why not take it one step further and make it look more real? So that was one of the things about the the Mana series is they wanted to keep it cartoony. They wanted to keep it. That's a tried and true look. Like Square Enix was all about these particular kind of shapes. So Square, right? Square at the time. Square at the time. First off, you have to understand that back then those graphics were. There was something I heard it said once. It's there's something imaginative about those graphics. Even though they were still 32-bit back in the time, just the way that they happened to have done it, it was just amazing, right? I, even though it's pixel graphics, yeah, it's polygonal and blah, blah, blah. It still looks beautiful. I mean, what they do with that 32-bit is amazing. So, would you say that the designers have maintained the feeling and atmosphere of the original with the current theatrical release of, of the trailer? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would say they've definitely kept the same feel. Like, they've added, of course, the more color I was mentioning and the more depth. Like, you can see more shadows instead of it just being like a brown line for his hair. You actually see, a, I would say, maybe four or five, possibly even six colors in the hair of the character, whereas before, there was brown and light brown. So does that add to the game? I, I think so. It brings the realism that people who play, say, Final Fantasy now, they're looking for that realism. So they've given you the, the cloud, they've given you the shadows, they've given you realism, but they've kept the feel that Mana brought, where it was it was a feel-good game, and it, the colors were bright and happy, and they've kept that instead of making it dark and scary. Like a lot of people. All of the colors are brought forth in a more 3D, because this PlayStation has that ability now, right? It's got so much more processing power and graphics power. It, they made it 3D. Why not? That was an obvious choice. They kept the same color scheme to make it a recognizable 
I mean, it's very much the same stuff. I agree with all that. But there seems to be something about it that, once again, I saw a comment and I kind of adhere to it. Is the, With the ability that you have on the PlayStation 4, you either go all the way or don't do it. And that's kind of where I'm stuck on this, that I felt like they could have done something I, I agree. I'm looking at the footage right now, and it looks like the same footage that I would have seen in the PlayStation 3 or maybe the Wii. Exactly. And, and I'm thinking to myself, you know, they, they didn't go as far as they could have with the PlayStation 4 level of processing power when it comes to the graphics. Now, the one possible benefit to that is that, once again, they're not charging this as a $60 game. They're charging this as a $40 game. So the price is reduced. So maybe that's why they didn't use all of the current power, right? Because otherwise it would have taken more time, blah, 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 right? And Phoenix's uh, point was that that's not really needed. The intention is to keep the same feel of that. Correct. Right. The real question does need to be uh, pointed out later on is, is does the addition of graphics actually do that? Or is it kind of feel like it, it was kind of a, a partial remake right. instead of like an actual? I, f I feel that they've kept the whimsical fantasy and they literally, like, you, you see these people talking side by side in one of the scenes of the, of the trailer and, and it looks like they just took Secret of Mana and literally added that third dimension and just popped them out. All the colors remained true, the, the design remained true, the style remained true. They just added more texture and they added that extra dimension, which I, I think is perfect. It's exactly what I want. So it, I, I guess it just remains to be seen whether or not it's worth the $40 price tag if they look for sale. Right. So let's move on to control. You know, with any RPG, controls serve as a way to traverse through the world, right? But more importantly, uh, they're used to navigate the menus to manage your characters. There's a lot of character management in RPGs. So what worked for the Nintendo when it came to player management? And what do you hope the PS4 will approve upon in the newer version? We'll start with you, Chrono. So the, the main control thing being... If you look at the Super Nintendo controller and the PlayStation controller, they're honestly not that different, right? Same amount of buttons, same, except there's a few obvious functionality abilities that the PlayStation 4 controller now has that the Super Nintendo did. Right? Like the motion sensor pad. Motion sensor pad, as well as an additional shoulder button, right? So there's possibilities for you to do stuff there, but once again, when it comes to the game. Are you making it different? Are you making it the same? It looks like it's going to be the exact same game, which, all intents and purposes, that's what I think most of us want. So, the controller isn't necessarily going to add anything, uh, but I don't think it's going to take anything away either, because once again, it's pretty much the same thing. Now, actual in-game gameplay, I think, is going to be a little different. Uh, I've heard a few things described about delay, or the stun effect, when you get hit. When that happened, uh, it was about three seconds, from my understanding, on the Super Nintendo, whereas I've heard it said that on the PlayStation 4, it's only going to be like half that time frame. Now, the reason that's a huge matter is that because in the old game, some people complained that they could be stun locked, and that added a unfair difficulty level to the game that obviously a lot of people don't like. Because it's not like that's real difficulty. That's built in taking advantage of a, a player right. kind of thing, right? Whereas the one and a half seconds, I think that's a little bit more realistic, if that's what it is. And what about menus? Uh, uh, were you usually plagued by a lot of menus and menus within menus? And do you think they're going to make any adjustments on that? <clears throat> so yes. Be it you're looking for an item, or you're trying to equip, or you're even trying to tell your AI components, because not everybody has three friends to play with, uh, how to how to work. Are you going to defend? Are you going to attack? There was menus inside of menus inside of menus, and you get used to it, and it does speed up, but it was kind of annoying when you first start playing. I'm hoping with the, like, like Chrono mentioned, the additional buttons, I'm hoping that they make, like, hotkeys. So if you're gonna like, if you're gonna eat a candy, is that one of your shoulder buttons or a different button on on the control? Like, so I, I'm I'm hoping that's what they're gonna do. The extra buttons could be like hotkeys to the other characters, and that would make things a lot easier for that one player game. Well, 
Uh, we look forward to seeing how they adjust their control settings because fundamentally that's one of the, the best ways to determine if the game's worth playing is if you can handle the controls and the menus. So let's move on to the difficulty. Chrono had mentioned it before. It's really difficult to fairly compare difficulty level from an older game on an older console than a modern game for a variety of reasons. However, since this will be a remake of an older game, as a veteran of this game, what are you looking for in terms of difficulty and the changes you would expect? Start with Phoenix. Cool. So for me, the difficulty was, like I said in the, just a moment ago, it was the AI. And trying to get them to cast specific spells at specific times. So that sounds like a management issue and not necessarily a difficulty issue. Right. But when you're playing a game that doesn't wait for you, management is a difficulty. We believe that's considered one of those unfair difficulties, like the stun. At the end of the game, yes. <laughs> uh, early on, when the enemies aren't quite so difficult, not so much. It's just an annoyance. Do you think that uh, one of the primary focuses of the PS4 remake should be to, to mitigate that, I would say, thing that makes it an annoyance? Yes. Uh, they have the chance now to address the things that people rage about in this game. They've had the ability to fix it for... 30 years now? Uh, don't even want to say. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it just, I pray and, and pray and hope that they decide to fix those particular things. They made me rage so many times. I told you AI not to run in and smash things because you are a caster. <laughs> Why are you running in and smashing things? And it just, it, it, I raged so many times I had to stop playing the game and finally because I was so angry. So... That being said, I think, so difficulty being the question, right? Honestly, I don't think a lot of people play this game for a difficulty per se. It's more just, it's one of the more enjoyment that you can get out of the game, right? It's the storyline, the interactivity. So difficulty, I don't think is necessarily on the forefront of a lot of people's minds. People aren't playing this to play Dead Souls, right? I mean, if they want difficulty, they'll go play Dead Souls. This is they're looking for the enjoyment of that. Right? So I don't think they're going to look for an improvement. So hopefully there won't be an improvement, but hopefully it won't make things too easy either. The way it was, I think the way it needs to be. Okay. So focusing on difficulty levels, it comes down to the difference between difficulty because enemies have higher hit points versus the difficulty such as in the finesse of managing your characters. Um, which some people would claim would be an annoyance instead of actual difficulty in game versus, you know, the flash and awe of, you know, hitting an enemy for 127,000 points of damage and moving the bar a quarter of an inch, right? So you got to think about difficulty in that regard. And what it sounds like, you, the difficulty of the game was good at the time when it was created, but we're looking for ways to make the, the menu management and the, the actual movement simpler and more fluid to make the game not necessarily less difficult, but easier to play and more manageable. Exactly. So, Secret of Mana has always been one of those games, it's, it's really just an adventure. And when you, you know, Geo, swing a sword and you hit somebody, you don't believe that you've done 57,000 million damage to them. You might have done 20, right? You're a person who just picked up a sword. There's no way you're going to do that much damage. If you're looking to do hundreds of thousands of millions of damage, you play Disgaea. That game is ridiculous and just throws numbers at you. This, you you do like 12. I think I think at one point I did, what, 700 damage with a spell. I think the max damage on it is 900. Yeah, it, it doesn't go crazy. Um, I honestly, I, I hope that they don't do the, you know, what's the word I want to use here? The... The wow factor. I hope they don't go, oh, now you can do 50 million damage. It's just those are numbers that we don't need. So if you look at the, um, if you watch some of the pre-gameplay, uh, the first boss and the first few enemies, he's dealing pretty much the exact same amount of damage. He has the exact same amount of life as it did in the original. So it looks like it's going to stay. All right, so speaking of watching the footage, uh, we'll move on to music and sound. So, um, Chrono, what are the differences in the soundtrack and game sounds that you've heard so far? And do you think these differences are going to help or hurt the remake? So, obviously, the opening music has some difference. 
because it's more orchestrated, right? It's not just MIDI. It's there's a, a, almost like there's an orchestra there, right? Which there might be. I wouldn't be surprised considering what Square had. Honestly, I I hope this is another area where I hope they don't really change anything. If they put a orchestra behind it, great. But leave everything pretty much the way it was. So then that has to beg the question is then, if you liked it exactly the way it was, then why bother getting the, the, the new game if it doesn't have uh, changes in the sound, changes in the, the music. Uh, it's going to be exactly the same versus... So the music is one of those areas where I, Square has done music great since time and memory. I don't... Whatever they do with it, I'm sure it's going to be good. I know they're going to change it some, and I'm just... I'm pretty sure it's going to be good. And one of the things that we're going to bring up next, the sore thumb of the, this conversation is the voice acting. Uh. That is something that they have definitely decided to add into the game. A lot of older games leaned on text as a way to convey dialogue in games, instead of relying on paying for voice acting. Mm -hmm. How will the use of voice acting affect the ability to I am not the person to ask this question to. So, usually I really enjoy voice acting because it helps me keep a person separated from, you know, voices in my head. All of the voices. All of the voices in my head. No, like, say this, you know, porky guy that you meet up with, and I always pictured him as to be, you know, kind of, eh, kind of a jerk face sound. He might actually be just like, oh, you're just, you know, an, a person in my town that I don't like, you know. Voice actors can really mess it up because now I have, because this is an old game, I already have designed voices for each of these people. I, I don't want to, I mean, if anybody's actually listened to the trailer, I'm like, what's this sword doing here? I can guarantee you that is not how I envisioned the main character to sound. And it's, I already don't like it. And I'm hoping that there will be an option to turn it off. <laughs> so what do you think the use of voice acting serves for this game? Um, so it's supposed to serve as a way to speed up uh, how the game is played. Voice acting makes it so they don't have to do the text, so people don't have to read. So it keeps the playtime roughly the same from user to user. Because if the game tells you the story, you don't have to worry about the fast readers or the slow readers. I can guarantee you, people who have played the game before... What? Chrono. Mm -hmm. If Chrono has played a game before, and I have never seen it before, I rely on reading what's going on on the screen, and he is a born button masher. He will smash that button as soon as text hits the screen, and then I'm screwed. I don't know what's going on. You're the worst. And... Just because I read fast. You weren't reading it, you're like, oh, I remember this part, spam. That too, but... <laughs> <laughs> so now it begs the question of, can you skip scenes? And is that a thing that needs to exist in the game? Or... So I'm pretty sure they built that in. It's very much a... Uh, what do you want to say? It, it's, the, it's the way games are created. Well, if you remember, the dark underbelly memes of video games always comes back to the, the cutscenes. You know, the, un <laughs> the uncuttable cutscenes. Un no, <laughs> yeah. don't make me watch it. Don't make me watch it over and over and over. Especially if there's a moment where you like this this uh, monologue from some bad guy right before Ooh. the boss fight, and then you croak and die, and you start over again, and you start watch back you at the, and you can't yeah. cut uh. the scene. So th that's the intent, right? Right, so, right. Um, I'm assuming then, as you guys mentioned, this game is an adventure. It's not necessarily a hack em slash em it's not a Streets of Rage type of game. It's <laughs> intended to explore a world and explore humanity in a different way. I'm assuming that means that the dialogue is a fundamental aspect of the game. Well, there wasn't much dialogue. Okay. They have certain scenes where they're like, here's what's going on, here's what you have to do next, and then there's no more text. So there's huge spans of time where you're playing, where there is no words, um, and you don't have to worry about that. But when they do have the words, it tells the story the way that it needs to be told. There's no additional fluff. There's no additional filler. It's, hey, here's what's going on. This is what you need to do next to progress and save the world. So, and that was the beauty of the game, is that you didn't need voice acting. So did they need to add it? I'm honestly not sure that they really did. They probably could have done without. Once again, back then, 
The other reason why they didn't do voice acting was not only just because they may not want to pay for it or this, that, or the other thing. They couldn't fit it in. Especially when they did what they did with this game, where they took all of that space that they had available and they used it for graphics, the abilities that you use during fights, the other things that they did with it just took up too much space. They didn't have enough room to put it. Right. That definitely audio is on. hard to compress audio yeah. uh, into something that doesn't sound like a squirrel or sound like. You know. Especially when you put it in the MIDI format, which is basically all that they used back then. I do have to say, though, before we leave the sound area, I hope that the monster sounds are still here. Especially monsters like the Rabbites. <laughs> they are the first character you're, or monster you're going to encounter, they are the dumbest monster you're going to encounter. But they make the cutest hop sound, and I need that in my life. <laughs> it sounds like a personal problem. So we're gonna move on to the old versus new, right? This is the this is the the, the juicy bit of this this interview. Is Square Enix had the opportunity to do more than just revamp polygons and add orchestral music to the game or voice acting? You know, uh, so Chrono, what do you hope the game provides that's an actual and really chewable improvement from the original. Um, one, I do appreciate the graphics. I kind of, I hope for more. I always end up getting disappointed usually. Um, but the gameplay, I think, is one of the key things, right? As we talked about, there are some things that we weren't quite pleased with about how it played. They make those improvements. Like, that's, that's kind of exact. Um, one very small detail you could only, only one of you could use a weapon at a time. And technically, while that's very realistic, maybe all three characters can use one weapon at a time. The same weapon? No. If they add that, I will be so angry. You are given a mana spear, a mana sword, a mana whip. Not everybody can use the whip unless we start throwing it amongst each other. I'm ready to attack now, throw me the whip! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's. When you're playing a multiplayer, that can be a, a thing. Uh, but other than that, honestly, there's not too much to improve on. That game. It's just one of those things that just really felt like a, a really good game. The improvements that I have seen via artistry, music, uh, those have been really good. Uh, but the gameplay, not the same. And then Phoenix, uh, do you think Square Enix is going to change the pace of the game to match the pace of more modern gaming and RPGs? Or do you think they're going to stick to the shining up of the old trophy uh, instead of really taking the opportunity to show off with new technology and uh, their experience as game developers? Honestly, for this particular kind of game, I'm pretty sure they're going to stick to the same pace. And and the, le I mentioned earlier they're going to speed up the pace by adding voice acting. That, that I'm hoping is the only way that they're going to speed it up. The damage is about the same, so you're not going to kill monsters faster. And honestly, I mean, there's no real way to speed up the game. if Unless they make those numbers crazy. That, that would be the only way to speed it up. The uh, hotkey thing could also speed up the, the general flow, but I'm pretty sure the story is just going to remain true to its relaxed, explore the world, here's what's going on kind of feel. If they sped it up and made it more hectic, you would lose that whimsical fantasy that they that Secret of Mana is beloved for. Which could also make some players not like it, but I, I think that's I mean that's that's what you, you go play, for that if you want. That's that's what you play Madden for. You want crazy hectic, <laughs> you play Madden. So being as uh, Geo, um, I've never played Secret of Mana before. So, looking at the theatrical trailer release, looking at the old footage from the game, and hearing two people who have played the game and are avid fans of the game, you know, the question that I pose for myself is that uh, when I played an old game that I really, truly enjoyed, I have that nostalgia. I really think that's an important um, component of, of having a remake, is that nostalgic factor. But also, for me, it I think about budget, I think about uh, fiscally, is it worth just buying the same game over again uh, on a platform I can play now versus an older platform that you know, takes a burger to plug into the TV? <laughs> so the, what it really comes down to is I am looking for that evolution of gameplay. I am looking for, okay, so you have a, a wonderful gem. It's a really, really nice game. It's been remarked as one of the best RPGs of its time. 
um, on several occasions. Uh, that's not a quote by me. That's a quote by other people who have been reviewing games for a long time. I would be looking for an increase in pace. I would be looking for smoother um, control. I would be looking for a, a simpler and easier to navigate, not necessarily less complex menu system. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'm looking for things that actually curtail the game to make it updated with the pace of mainstream gaming today. If you're going to remake a game from the, the exact same way and only marginally increase the graphics, only uh, marginally change the sounds, add in voice acting, which may or may not even be a fundamental component of the game, it doesn't seem worthwhile. So a posed question to the two of you is why play? Why should you pick up the game Secret of Mana coming out in the next one? So if you haven't played it, ever played it before, I would say pick it up just because it's a great game. It's worthwhile. Especially only $40, I think it'll be worthwhile. Uh, so once again, it seems to be rare these days that you get a game that actually costs what you pay for it for the kind of thing. How many hours do you expect to get out of it? All that kind of thing, right? This is a game, first off, multiplayer ability, right? They've stated many times that it is going to have that capability included with it. Um, but it doesn't even have to always be multiplayer. Say you're going through the game, middle of the game, uh, somebody else is like, hey, I, you got that game. Hey, I want to play with you. Great. Pick up the controller. Start playing. It's not like you have to start from the beginning. They can pick up at any point in time and start playing. And you don't always have to have them with you when you go to play again. Because the AI will uh, for me, uh, it appeals to my desire of RPG and getting better at something. Um, RPGs, typically, they're like, oh, gain some experience and level up. This game does not have that feature. Your character is always a flat level character. You level up your weapon skills. You get better with your weapons. And that's how you make your character get better. There is, of course, armor and things that you would change to get more defensive, but Geo will always be Geo. If you give him the level 1 weapon, he's comes back to level 1. So it reminds me of uh, Dark Cloud, um, as the Dark Cloud 2, the, the, the character has a, a weapon that fires a ranged object, such as a gun and a wrench, which can be upgraded into uh, different things. And these weapons are the conduits of which you deal damage. Um, the main character himself doesn't actually improve, besides maybe when he's uh, having extra hit points, his, his weapon vibrates mm -hmm. as an example. So, um, what is a modern day example of an RPG like this? Game? Hmm. Chrono? Hmm. <laughs> comment in mind, do you think this is going to, I don't know, pull people out of the mainstream gaming and be like, look at this, what, the, what used to be, like the, the nostalgia factor, do you think that's going to draw a lot of people to the game? Or do you think this is this, this game is specifically designed to pull at your pocketbook for people who play the game? How is it going to draw new players? Honestly, I don't know if it's going to draw new players. It should, because it's you know, touted as one of the best RPGs, period. Um, and it, it really should, but I, I'm thinking that this is going to unfortunately be one of those lost gems, because people nowadays, they want super fast-paced, hectic games, and, and unless you're in a boss fight, this game doesn't get very hectic. It's very tactical. Well, there is a lot of mainstream play that way. Um, I honestly think that there will be... There's going to be a decent amount of people to pick up this game and they play it and they're going to love it. Will it be enough to make it, you know, number one game on the top ten list? No, probably not. I'm pretty sure uh, Sony will get the money. Or Square will get the money. Whoever's going to get the most. They're going to get their money back enough to make it worthwhile just because it is that much of a beloved, I mean, it's almost like Marvel, right? Like, people love the, the Secret of Mana series. Not not just Secret of Mana, right? I mean, there's a whole series behind this that makes it interesting. If, and that's part of one of my biggest hopes about this whole thing, is that this will not be the end of it. 
that there will be more to come. With that being said, speaking of more to come, um, we're going to wrap up this interview here, but that is not where the secret of mana ends for Outer Fox Productions. So we're actually going to pick up the game on the date of its release. We are going to start our own playthrough of the secret of mana. We are going to do additional game reviews after the fact. So this is what the actual gameplay is like. And we're going to have live streams, and we're going to put it, of course, on YouTube. Thank you guys so much for listening in to Other Fox Productions' game review of Secret of Mana. Thank you, Frodo. Thank you, Phoenix, for your input. And uh, we look Thank forward you. to seeing. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we look forward to seeing you guys as we play Secret of Mana for you guys in the future. So, feel free to comment or suggest anything for us to look for in the game. If you have any uh, questions about the interview, or if you have any additional questions that we can ask Frodo and Phoenix, the uh, veterans of Secret of Mana, please put them in the comments below. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, please like and subscribe to see more videos in the future. Without further ado, we will see you in the next video. Yeah. Bye!